to Japan now, though, their radiation levels in the seawater near the Fukushima plant continue to rise. They're now more than three and a half thousand times higher than normal. Radioactive materials also been detected at in soil one, at the facility. Japan's governments describe the situation as serious and unpredictable. Workers have been unsuccessfully trying to restore the plant's cooling system in what's now the worst atomic crisis since Chernobyl. There's been some debate, too, over whether there are any similarities between the two events. Let's uh, discuss that. I'm joined by Professor Christopher Busby of the European Committee on Radiation Risk. Sir, thanks for being with us tonight. Uh, initially, when this disaster started, we were told, according to most media reports, that it was all very unlike the terrible events we witnessed in Chernobyl. You're saying different. Why? Well, I said right from the beginning that this was a, a Chernobyl-level disaster because it was quite clear to me at that time, having looked at the explosions, that there were ma major problems with those reactor pressure vessels, and it now turns out that there are, and that at least one of them is cracked and there's fuel all over the place. Um, the, the similarities with Chernobyl are quite, are quite real, and in fact, in, in a way, this is a much worse accident than Chernobyl, and the reason is that there are a lot of people living nearby. The population of the 100-kilometer zone is about 3 million, and out to 200 kilometers, there's another 7 million people. And the, and the contamination out to those distances, according to the IAEA, is about one megabecquerel per square uh, meter. Now, now, that's an awful lot of radiation. That's one million disintegrations per second per square meter of land, which is about twice as high as the Chernobyl exclusion zone. So there are going to be an awful lot of deaths and awful lot of cancers. Professor, can you just clarify for me, the reason that most people, most of the officials said in the first place it wasn't like Chernobyl is because, unlike Chernobyl, there was containment over the uh, reactors here in all of these. Uh, we, we think they're still intact, most of them anyway. And, uh, at those reactors, so that's why people were saying it's nowhere near as bad as Chernobyl. There was no huge, large-scale explosion. Uh, you're saying this is different. I just want to clarify it. Well, anyone, anyone who looked at those vid the video footage of those explosions wouldn't have said that there was no large-scale explosion. The well, they explosion said that's a hydrogen explosion, not a nuclear explosion. Well, it was a hydrogen explosion in Chernobyl as well, actually, so it was the same thing, although there have been some questions about whether it was a hydrogen explosion then. But the other point that you've missed, or that people missed, is that there were a huge number of spent fuel rods sitting right on top of the reactor. So when it exploded, and everybody saw it exploding, all of those fuel rods went up in the air. And anyway, as we now know, it has melted down. So I don't think it suddenly melted down yesterday. Is this a I worst think that that thing was split right from the beginning. Is, is this a worst case scenario then, as, as you see it? Or could it get worse than this? And what about the poor people that have to clean this up? They were called liquidators in Chernobyl. Even to this day, 25 years on, we're seeing uh, Japanese human beings risking their lives. Do you think anything could have been learned? I don't think anything could be done. The problem is that under those very high radiation fields, robots don't work, and they certainly found that at, at Chernobyl. At Chernobyl, they hired, they paid huge amount of money to the Germans to provide robots to go in there and remove the, the, the pieces of fuel, and the robots just packed up. They didn't work, because under those radiation fields, the, electrons, the, the electronics don't work. So you have to use people. Unfortunately, I don't think that even with the people there's much that they can do. The thing is out of control and we have a sort of science fiction scenario now. I think it's going to be very, very bad for Japan, but at the moment I don't think it's going to be quite as bad for the rest of the world. Luckily, because there's a very large Pacific Ocean between Japan and the next major landmass, although I have to say there are increases in radioactivity occurring now in California, just in the last information in the last few hours. So what, really what you're saying is we're not being told maybe the full picture as it's developing. Well, what about Tokyo? What, what fate lies ahead for Tokyo with its huge population. Well, uh, I've got data that shows that there are increases in radioactivity even to the south of Tokyo. So, given the, the large population of Tokyo and the population in the next section uh, close to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the site, there have been exposures to radionuclides. The main problem, of course, is not the radionuclides that show up on the gamma radiation monitoring systems, but the alpha-emitting radionuclides like plutonium and uranium, because these are invisible. They, they're, they're not being detected. And I have to say that we're not being told everything. And right from the beginning, we weren't being told everything. And this is one thing that happened with Chernobyl as well. The, that, that is another parallel between these two situations, is that we don't get told anything, and, when, and, and the, the, the truth slowly comes out as if it's being dragged out of people. Mm. How much of a blow has this been for the nuclear industry, or is it just too difficult to say at this time? Well, I would hope that it would mean that the nuclear industry was finished. I, I mean, we can't... This is certainly going to... 
in my opinion, it's going to finish the north of Japan off. I don't see what they can do about it. They're going to have a very large exclusion zone. The cost is going to be absolutely phenomenal. So the nuclear industry, I think, is finished. But then I thought that after Chernobyl, to be honest, and what happened there was that there was a massive cover-up, an international cover-up by the nuclear lobby of all the health effects of the Chernobyl accident, which is only just coming out now. We now know, as a result of research, that at least a million people have died as a result of the Chernobyl accident. Yet we still have the nuclear industry telling us that only a few liquidators died and there really wasn't any problem except thyroid cancer in a few children, and that can be cured. That was a pack of lies, and I think we're going to get another pack of lies after this, so people should watch out. Professor Christopher Busby, Scientific Secretary of the European Committee on Radiation Risks, as you are. Thanks for being on RT tonight. Appreciate it.